हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज विकास पाटिल दिस इज दाइन्थ चैप्टर ऑफ ग्रेट नाइन वेदरिंग दिस इज द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ द चैप्टर हियर वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वेदरिंग इट्स मीनिंग एंड टाइप्स ऑफ वेदरिंग बेसिकली फिजिकल वेदरिंग लेट्स बिगिन विथ सम मिसकनसेप्शन possible that since the the words are similar people might believe weathering is similar to weather well of course not weather has a role to play in weathering but they are not similar then weathering is a fast process and uh, we will we see the effects of weathering happening no our weathering is very slow then all the rocks undergo the same type of weathering well of course not all the rocks have different nature different composition they respond differently uh, react differently to different uh, agents of weathering so of course the weathering is different for different rocks then it might be believe that rain water is so weak I mean, it's some just water how can it harm rocks well of course it does it takes time but it does and rocks and soils are formed together in the pro- on the primitive earth well of course that's not correct the soil is uh, formed from the rocks then uh, once the regolith is formed it becomes soil uh, that could also be a misconception that once the rocks are broken into smaller particles we have soil ready well of course that's not correct let's understand uh, nature is playing a balancing role nature is trying to bring all the land to the same level that's done through gradation so that's the process of bringing uh, the land to a common level this happens through two processes one is degradation so anything which is higher has to be degraded to lower heights it is done through weathering erosion and mass movement then there is something known as aggradation which is done through deposition which means you uh, uplift the lower areas so what would happen if the gradation is complete if somehow the nature is able to make the entire land flat of course we'll come to something like something known as penny plain penny plain where earth would be absolutely flat well of course it's not possible earthquakes volcanic eruptions they will never let it happen uh there is a miniature form of uh, penny plain in uh, australia copper penny plain uh, which wherein you the land looks absolutely flat as as uh, far as you can see you see line absolutely flat this gives us uh, an idea about how the land would look like how a penny plain would look like so we see changes on the surface of the earth as uh, we have learned earlier also internal processes and external processes both are responsible for it uh, we have learned about the uh, internal processes tectonic movements earthquakes volcanic eruptions and mountain building we are about to learn about the external processes weathering is the part of this chapter and erosion will become will be taken up in the next chapter weathering is a uh, simple breaking down or decay of the material of the earth's crust that's the rocks in smaller pieces the agents that cause weathering are in atmosphere they are temperature change moisture frost so weathering is breaking up of rocks by the agents which are present in the atmosphere the main agents are temperature change moisture or humidity rain weathering is in situ means it's a static process once the rocks are broken there is no transportation of the broken material types of weathering weathering uh, can be physical in nature or mechanical uh, then you can be chemical in nature it could be biological in nature physical we- or chem- mechanical weathering uh, basically here the rocks are simply broken down into smaller pieces there is no further change in the composition of the rock or the mineral content so it is done by uh, agents like temperature moisture or frost and pressure types of physical weathering we can see exfoliation granular disintegration frost weathering 
let's look at exfoliation uh, exfoliation is common in places which are far away from the uh, coastal areas so here the daily range of temperature is high and desert is the most common place that you can think of hot deserts and this happens only in a uh, tropical region so here during the in exfoliation during the day as as said earlier it's in a hot and dry regions so tropical region with uh, very less rainfall and the place must be located away from the coast so here during the day when the temperature rises the rock surface expands and uh, as it expands there are very tangential cracks along the surface created now the, when the night comes the temperatures fall low and that's what causes the rocks to contract well if it happens once doesn't matter but if it continues to happen for months and years uh the upper layer of the rock breaks and comes off and then the moment the upper layer comes off a new surface is exposed and that is what then affects the new surface you can see an example of uh, exfoliation on this boulder here also you can see exfoliation on the boulders granular disintegration here the uh, the rock disintegrates into uh, grains of minerals so for granular disintegration we need dry climate no water involved and then uh, since different minerals react different to uh, uh, water and temperature they expand and contract at different rate so as this happens again and again uh, and they get contact with the uh, moisture on regular basis these minerals uh, start disintegrating and then the rock breaks down into smaller fragments next is frost weathering frost weathering involves water uh, and temperatures which change from uh, being under freezing freezing point to above freezing point so during the day as the temperatures are slightly higher the the water enters into cracks during night the temperatures fall below freezing point so that causes the uh, crack to be widened and the water has this special property of anomalous expansion so when it freezes it kind of uh, pushes the crack wider next morning temperature would rise again next night temperature would freeze again so there is a continuous uh, freezing and thawing of water and there is a constant push to make the crack wider eventually the crack would become wide and this would cause the rock to break this is very common in the tropical region the lower latitudes but higher altitude so it's very common in himalayas where in the day time the temperatures come above the melting point and the night time the temperatures go below the freezing point it will not be common in uh, polar regions because there the temperatures don't rise enough here you can see the pavement uh, disturbed because of frost weathering this is also an example of frost weathering one more example of frost weathering so this was uh, the different types of physical weathering uh, in the next session we will look at different other types of weathering and the effects of weathering thank you